Why are you licking my gobstopper? Strike that. Reverse it. Nazi punks! Lick my plate! Rainy! It'll be 10 minutes where it's like a Steven Soderbergh Ocean's Eleven movie. It's all slick and funny and stuff. Then just the most horrific shit imaginable happens. It's because that's what the fucking movie's about, you asshole. Uh, this fucking guy. The tree of life is freaking awesome. I'm sure you think it is. Made it to black. Oh, you are fucking this up. Neon slime. Gangster movie douchebag. Well, forget about it. Yeah, forget about it. Ben Sematique. Where I like, uh, you know, I like the sets and I like all that stuff. What did you say? Cinematique? I don't know. Jared Leto, man. <laughs> You're the worst, dude. If you, if, if you ever listen to this, Jared Leto, you are the fucking worst. Like, but I'd rather it. watch that dude, the English dude, who looks like he's not done yet. <laughs> this movie is the opposite of getting like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to all our listeners who have been listening to us for over a year now. Subscribe to us on Apple iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and any other platform that has podcasts. Visit our Patreon page, become a Patreon to get more additional content. Again, we appreciate you listening and keep watching those movies. Now, on with the show. I just love this podcast. I love this podcast. I don't love much. Ladies and gentlemen, Doug Wall, Lee Bridges, and Garrick Lane, this is Tales from the Video Store. Welcome to Tales from the Video Store number 81. 81, yes. We've got body armor and bourbon uh, down here in the studio, and Lee's got fried chicken cooking outside of his house. <laughs> we are all here and ready to go. How you guys doing? Doing good. How are you? I'm good. I, dude, I, I could not help but laugh. I, you know, I, I like to always look at uh, haters of Letterboxd. Did you see the one about the Invisible Man? Yes. That's the one. Nah. The, he, they gave some guy the lobster. The lobster gave the Invisible Man from 2020 one star because he could see the man. <laughs> uh. Uh, and the best other one that I saw is the half star on the uh, from Paris Wimsey, Little Women from the the 2019 the what the 17th reboot of this movie. Um. He gave it a half star. He said, if your sister is so sick all the time, why would you take her out to the beach in the cold and the wind and think, and then be surprised when she dies? <laughs> why would you? Oh, you really? You really got to ask yourself. No, no, no. Anyway. All right, man. Let's get into this. Um, we had some sort of movie, man. Uh, some sort of one of my favorite ha- uh, from old, old times, the Hammer Productions. Right. Who wants to introduce it? I guess I will. Okay. It's from uh, 1971. It is uh, The Twins of Evil. And it stars Peter Cushing and uh, the Collinson sisters, who were the first twin Playboy Playmates. God, and boy were they. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's sort of, it's like sort of like the beginning of the end for Hammer, like, you, you know, Night of the Living Dead had come out. Rosemary's Baby, you know, The Exorcist was about to come out shortly after this, and they were and sort of the gothic horror was sort of becoming old hat, and so they had to uh, add one of the most popular things you can add to a movie, which is boobs. And if you watch your movies from the '60s, they're very sort of you know old timey. But by 1970, they were just like, well, people don't like that anymore, so uh, they became very much more sexy than they had been in the '50s and '60s. And the plot is these twins moved to, from Italy to, uh, you know, Transylvania, middle, uh, you know, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere yeah. in Europe. It doesn't Conveni- matter. Conveniently moved to Transylvania. Yeah, right. Yeah. And their uncle is Peter Cushing, and he is a, uh, he sort of leads a murder squad of guys who go around and burn women at the stake if they think they're witches, even though there's no real proof that these women are witches, you know, and, yeah. uh. There's a local count 
who is actually is a Satan worshiper, and through sort of various satanic rituals, he becomes a vampire and then starts murdering other people, and then turns one of the twins, they're both identical twins, into a vampire. And uh, it's just, I mean, it's, you know, it's a Hammer movie. It's dudes in, you know, puffy shirts and chicks with giant boobs. God, and, and they you are. And people getting their heads cut off. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, sometimes, man, and this is going to sound, this is probably going to be completely politically incorrect, but I don't give a shit. I think that I think that I should have lived in that time. Because I love those dresses, and I love the way they fit on women. And I, yeah, just every, yes, the stretch. Everything's pushed up. Everything, but and everything's put in, and yeah, and people smoked and drank until they got tuberculosis or liver cancer. Nobody At gave, when and nobody gave a shit. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, you know, dude, like that was just the way it was. And yeah. there was no fixing. If you got AIDS, there, oh, wait, there was no AIDS. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. There were no rainbow flags. There were no yeah. black flags. No, if you got white the flu, you fucking died. Yeah, that's it. You, you yeah. just died, and then if you, if, and then, you know what? If Doug and I would have gotten drunk and run into some tavern somewhere and shot our mouth off, we'd have just gotten killed. It wouldn't have been anything else. Yeah, it wouldn't have been jail time or prison or probation for throwing a freaking beer bottle. No, we'd have just gotten killed. They'd have been like, ah, Garrick and Doug again. Get them out of it. I'm just saying, out. like, that, that was the perfect time to live, man. And I'll tell you, that was the, the, uh, the, the that time for film was just the best time. I think the, I think the 70s, man, like, they just had a lot of money for it. Even, like, this movie, it's a Hammer movie, but it looks. It looks amazing. So fucking good, yeah, dude. It does. It, it just looks so Good. That, that was one of the first things I wrote in my notes is how good this movie looks. Uh, it looks like it was shot on perfect 35 millimeter yeah. reversal Kodak. Yeah. They had. You see movies sets. that came out this year that, or, or last year in the last 10 years or 20 years that don't look half don't as good as Don't look half movie. as good as yeah. this. The sets look great. Everything looked great. There's Costumes, be- everything. There's, hey, there, there, there's beautiful women leads that don't look half as good as these girls. Ooh. The Collins. I mean, I'm just saying, like, it look, it, it's a Hammer movie, yes. Playmates. I, I wish that... One I, a vampire, one not. It's beautiful. Uh, Sorry. I, I I just... I love movies like this. I love it. The, these I watched these it twice. style, old gothic horror movies are some of my absolute favorites that have ever been made. You throw in a little bit of witchcraft, you know, a little bit of puritanical religion and some Satanism, and then you stir up the pot, and what you get is absolutely perfect. It's glorious. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just... These are these are movies that I... You know, when I was a kid and I would get lucky enough to be somewhere where they had Cinemax or HBO, if I, if I stumbled upon something like this, it was like a gold mine. Like, I, I couldn't have been happier. You know, watching something like Porky's was all fine and good, but if I could find something that had a little bit of horror mixed into it, it just meant so much more to me. It was just a so much grander of a movie. You know, it, yes, I enjoyed the boobs, but I enjoyed the rest of the movie just as much, if not more. Oh, yeah. You know what it's, I mean? Like, I still would have liked this had it not had that sexual aspect to it. But adding that into it just made it even better. It took something that was already, I think, going to be good and made it great. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I had the voyeuristic, the sex scenes with the voyeurism. Oh, yeah. And then it's it's funny because, like, these days, a sex scene's a sex scene. Or it's vile. Oh, there it's vile. I mean, dude, sex. Put, it, put it like that. It's 1971. And they had that little scene where they were like, you're like, is it getting ready to get, like, are these chicks getting ready to hook up or get down? Like, what's going on here? How risque that must have been. If you were watching it back then, you had to just been like, oh my God, look, oh, they can't, they're doing it. Like, it's yeah. a, it's pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. You know, looking back at you, you know, it's a scene that you don't even blink at nowadays. But, you know, watching these movies back then or, or even in the 80s, you had to have just been taken back by, by 
some of the stuff that they tried to, to throw out there. Even though they don't fully throw it out there, they kind of dangle it enough to where you're like, wow, okay, I like that. Yeah, and they, they, they had the one girl the Count was uh, having sex with, and, you know, instead of showing the sex, I think I think it was LeVon Peters, they pan up to her hand, and her hand's, like, close to a candle, and she starts stroking the candle. Yeah. And it's a motif for what is happening. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, it sounds sick, but it's it's brilliant for 1971 because yes. it's exactly what they were trying to convey, and they're conveying it in a nice, sensual way, right. making people squirm in their seats for 1970. Yeah. It was great. I loved it, man. I absolutely loved everything about it. Yeah. I mean, it almost, I it almost beat the boobs. The, it almost beat the spaceship with boobs. <laughs> Almost. I mean, it's almost. It's just, it's a different movie, but it's I don't know. completely it, different. Yes. Completely different. But man, like movies like this, they don't really get made anymore in the mainstream. Well, like, this isn't really a mainstream movie, but you know, when movies like this are made nowadays, it's they're they're so it's missing something. Like I, I don't know what it is. It just it doesn't feel the same. You know, when they you, you watch like a like a gothic y kind of horror movie nowadays that has a little bit of sex or whatever. It just, it's not really the same, you know? This made me feel like. I, I don't know, man. Just put, It just put me in such like a different kind of headspace. I just really enjoyed it. Way more than I thought I would. I, I mean, right. I got like three minutes in and I was completely focused and, and was like, oh, man, this is, this yeah. is exactly what the doctor ordered. We keep cutting Lee off. Lee, yeah, what's, what's your spin, man? No, it's, uh, the reason that when you're talking about how good it looked is that it, you could say that about these movies and also about Shaw Brothers movies. That, that ha- those two studios, it was a factory. You know, they had a, like a dedicated crew of camera guys, of, 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 of gaffers, of, you know, lighting technicians. Basically, these movies, like they cranked them out, you know, every few months. There was a new Hammer movie. So it wasn't like now when you make a low-budget horror movie where, oh, we'll try to get some guys together. Like, they had, you know, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee on contract. So you had, like, legitimate, like, horror movie movie stars, which doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah. You know. And you, they, uh, apparently, uh, I would say the casting, the, I don't know if there was just a hot chick casting person for Hammer. It was just some guy, because they just, there are no, like, you know, there are no sixes in a Hammer movie. None. If they do, it's an old woman. There is, actually. There was. There was two guys that ca- did all the Hammer casting for the women. I checked it out. I'm sure that, and I'm sure that, and I'm sure those guys never missed a day of work. No, nope, they, nope. they, they traveled. The they traveled. They, traveled they traveled on a plane with their cigarettes and bourbon <laughs> and casting couch, and they went everywhere looking for these girls. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, they probably bought a couch with them. Oh, yeah, the couch probably went on the jet with them. Well, of course, back then, it was just a plane or something. They don't have private jets back then, but, yep. Right. Fine. But, yeah, there's just a, 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 like, it, everything looks like a painting in these movies. Yes. You know? I mean, it looks, it looks like a, well, not so much a painting, like, if you were, like, a, like, if you got, like, a horror novel, there's, like, a paperback horror novel, had, like, a lurid painted cover. That's what everything looks like, you know? And it's just like, these movies, they're just, there's a, uh, I actually have this book called The Hammer Story. It's just about the uh, the whole, uh, basically the whole history of the company. I'm on back, it has a quote. And it says, when we saw the logo of Hammer Films, we knew we were in for a very special picture. And the quote is from Martin Scorsese on the back. Nice. And uh, it's just like, yeah, they were just, I mean, like you said, what are, they, what are movies like that missing today? And, I, and the thing would be, I think it's fun. Like the movies are just fun. Yeah. Like when the what a spoiler alert when the when the twin who's a vampire sneaks out of the castle and as soon as she comes up to the top of the stairs, one of the best beheadings ever on movies. Like you just see this kind of quick cut of a, you know, a giant sword come and just slice her head off, and then you just see Christopher Peter Cushing standing there with a bloody head. And you know that could be the poster of the movie. Oh yeah. Like everything about it just crafted and just super cool. It's basically. They they spent thirty years making movies for fourteen year old boys. Yeah. You know, in the best possible way, yes. in an art way. Yeah. Uh, I just I love movies like this. Man. I do, man. 
It's great. I wish that you could continue to make these. Yeah. You know, I wish that I wish that I could find some dude in Stockholm or somewhere and go, so I'm going to make this movie, and I'm going to shoot it on 35 millimeter. It's going to look and feel like a hammer, even down to the logos. So we're going to make old logos. We're going to do it all. Yeah. And I'm going to put it out. Then with those, I'm going to do a little bit of a twist to make sure that it's exciting for the new generation. And some guy go, oh, okay. Okay, where do I sign check? Where do you get on your knees, give me three minutes, and I got you a check. <laughs> well, that's your luck, Eric. Story of your life, hey, old boy. Three minutes of your life, Eric. Yeah, I'd be like, right. <laughs> what's, what's three minutes, dude? <laughs> Come on, yeah. here we go. <laughs> but yes, no, really, it's, it is, it really is truly amazing. Like, it's, I, I, yeah, it looks great. Even though the story's not, um, I mean, it, it, the story's great, but it's, we've seen it a gazillion times. I mean, it's the same oh, thing yeah. over and over again. It's the execution of it is what makes it special. But it doesn't yeah. have Playmate twins in it, it Garrick. That's the difference. It does not That's have... the spice melange, yes. if you will. That's, okay. the, that's the base on, on top of the pasta, man. That's, oh, God that's, damn. Oh. Hey, uh, just a little note, guys. Yes. James Laggett um, is the, was the casting director on this movie. Okay. Um, so the other movies he's famous for casting are um, Clockwork... Uh, the, uh, Clark? Clark? Clarkwork? It's my Clockwork Orange. Did I you just, still look. I think I had a the balls stroke. that you just had in your mouth in Imagination Land, where you were getting that check written to you. Remove them from your mouth <laughs> and continue to I speak. I think I just had a mini stroke. Uh, Clockwork <laughs> Orange, uh, The Shining, and Barry Lyndon were some of his okay. movies that he cast. Wow, that's crazy. But he did a good job on this one, man. This is an A plus. Uh, most Hammer movies, with the exception of The Lodge. Right. I would even give The Lodge one go. But most of the Hammer movies are fantastic, man, and I would check them out. If you have a, you know, this, the winter's coming. If you have a crappy winter and you're stuck inside and you're up in Fargo or somewhere like that where you can't go out very much, you should stream a bunch of Hammer movies on Prime Video. It's like cinematic comfort food. Yeah. They, like you know, you like Eric said, you know exactly what you're getting. They're not inventing the wheel, but there's just something about them. They're just like comfortable. Yeah, you know, it's like therapeutic. It's like women getting women put Calgon and freaking bats shit, all sorts of can put up candles in a bath, and they <laughs> they get in it, and it's therapeutic, right? Where are you going? I'll go with this. Okay, <laughs> okay, listen. Mm-hmm. Most women. Like the fragrances, they get in the bath, they get some foam, and they sit in there for two hours. And it's therapeutic. People that like movies don't need to do that shit. Right. They need to turn on a Hammer movie. That's it. Yeah. Agreed. Bad, bad salts and hammers, baby. That's what you need. <laughs> okay. All right. Fucking A. I mean, come on. So, I'm working tonight, actually. So ham- I actually didn't throw it in, and yeah. you're, t- you're butt-breaking my balls. No, I love it. I love it. Talking about getting on my knees to get some money for a hammer movie. Let's do this. Anyway, (laughs) all right. (laughs) Now, the hammer, I actually almost came back like this about 10 years ago. What was that movie with uh, the guy from Harry Potter, The Woman in Black? Yeah. Yeah. That movie uh, was produced by the company that now owns the hammer name. And it was actually pretty successful. And, like, I remember a couple weeks after that came out, since it had made a good amount of money, they said they had gotten a script where... And it was going to be like 1890s London. And prostitutes were going to start dying and they were going to have two puncture wounds on their neck. And so under Scotland Yard, they would have to, they, there was this, going to be this secret prison. And that's where they kept Jack the Ripper. And they were going to turn him loose to try to find this killer who was killing these women with the two puncture holes, which was going to be Dracula. So there was going to be a Jack the Ripper versus Dracula movie. That and sounds fucking ne- perfect. Dude, that and it just never so happened. Awesome. Write this down, Gary. Like, Write it down. Take, it like, take some notes Like on. they were going to come back and make all this stuff, and it just never came together. Oh, man, that sounds glorious. I would have loved to have seen yeah. something like that. Yeah. But, you know. Anyway, but yeah, maybe, maybe one day. Maybe one day movies like this will start getting made again. 
I guess the closest thing would be Bram Stoker's Dracula. Would be the last time something like this. Yes, made. you're right. That's exactly right. Christopher Nolan could do this. Nolan, oh, yeah. Nolan could go anywhere he wanted and say, "All right, enough of this mind blowing shit. I just want to do an old vampire movie with some old and sets you know his- in a back in the backyard of some dude who lives in London and be done with it." And they'd be like, "How you know his see- limey ass has seen a thousand of these things too." Oh yeah. <laughs> A hundred percent. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. All right, well, it's a one hundred percent on this one. Oh, yeah, I, I love it. One hundred percent see it. Yeah. Twins of Evil. It's on Prime. On Amazon Prime. Yeah. All right, well, Lee, what did you watch? I watched a couple Hammer movies to sort of, you know, before I watched Twins of Evil. I watched on Hulu one of my favorites from 1974, Captain Chronos Vampire Hunter. Okay. Oh, dude, I saw that. I saw you posted that up, and I was like, and, hey, uh, I it was, that time to watch that. The guy who uh, directed it, it was the only movie he ever directed, and he was the second unit director for, like, The Avengers, all those 60s spy shows. So, and when he finally got a chance to make a movie, he made he wrote Captain Chronos Vampire Hunter, and the idea was that he was got based similar to Indiana Jones. Like, every movie would be in a different time period. There's no way nobody from Marvel didn't see this movie. Because he's kind of a half-vampire. He's, he's immortal, but he doesn't have any of the vampire attributes. There's no way that somebody from Marvel didn't see this and then create Blade the Vampire Hunter. I mean, it's just, it's not possible. But the idea of the movie was, like, he's in, like, the 1600s in the first one and like the second one he'd be in like the old west or like the third one he'd be in like 1930s Chicago but shortly after the movie was made Hammer went out of business so it never happened but it is I've been, nobody's, if you like Twins of Evil I would highly suggest checking out Captain Cronus Vampire Hunter it's uh, one of my favorite Hammer movies and uh, that, uh, but the only difference is the, ha- the vampires in that they don't drain blood they drain youth they sort of, when the women get attacked, they go from being 19 to like 80. Uh, and the, one of the other gimmicks in the movie was that every movie he would fight a different type of vampire in a different time setting. Oh, that sounds fun. And uh, it's one of the movies that uh, they that ha- the people who own the Hammer name, they've talked about remaking. Since it's not one of their more famous ones, it wouldn't like, you know, piss off a bunch of fans, you know. And so, uh, as opposed to if they remade like Twins of Evil, which is a more well-known movie. And uh, also watched uh, my favorite Hammer Dracula movie from 1969, Taste the Blood of Dracula, which Christopher Lee is sort of the hero in. Like it starts out with like the you know 1800s and these guys, they're sort of the t- town fathers of this town. They're you know the ministers, the you know the mayor, the you know. The, the businessmen of the town and they're sort of thought of as these sort of very forthright moral men but every night they get together and go to whorehouses and gamble and they take they you know kind of like in Twins of Evil they take part in these satanic ceremonies just because they're bored you know and this young guy comes to him and he is in the previous Dracula movie Dracula got staked in the heart and his body turned to dust well someone gathered the dust into a jar and he tells them if they drink that, they'll live forever. And so he pours it, the Dracula sort of blood dust in a cup and slices his hand and puts blood in it and drinks it and then immediately dies and all the old guys just run away. Well, as the guy dies, is laying there da- dead, like w- like wind and dust start blowing around and leaves and everything sort of cocoon around his body and then when the wind blows away, he's transformed into Christopher Lee. And that's sort of the first 15 minutes of the movie. And it's just, like if you've never if you if you like the uh, movie like I would highly suggest Taste the Blood of Dracula. It's my it's my favorite Hammer movie. Nice, okay. And uh, other than that, I just I've been other than that uh, not much. I've been rewatch. I started rewatching uh, the Fargo show for when the new uh, season comes out. And I and I started rewatching Mister In Between on Hulu. So so here, explain this to me. I saw the new trailer. It's got Chris Rock in it. It's all right. so. I They're don't not connect. Okay, I don't know anything They're about sort of this dumb. I, I don't know anything about these shows. Is it all? So it's all Fargo, North Dakota, but it's not connected. It's uh, it's it takes set. place in the world of the movie. Yeah, it's more like uh, 
you know the movie Fargo and just how it's presented. Yes. And, White. And just, White and snow and Well, hey, just everyone. how weird yeah. the, the story is and how it in- intermingles. And when you watch it the first time, part of you is like, man, is this real? Like, did this happen? And that's how these are... That, that's how they try and portray these as as, right. as they make they try and make it as realistic as they can. So you're like, did this really happen? Yeah, does that make sense? In the in the first the, season, I, there is a connection to the movie, right? Someone finds the money that Steve Buscemi, Buscemi hides. Oh, that's and then great. in later seasons, like the first season takes place in 2006, I think. And the second season takes place in two th- in nineteen seventy nine, and like people will play older or younger characters, sort of background characters. Right. Like Patrick Wilson's character from season two is played by Keith Carradine in season one, but they're older or younger depending on the time period. But other than that, they don't really connect. It's basically just the same world, you know. If that makes sense. And it's very. I mean, it's very well done. I mean. You know, I yeah. don't. I don't have. I say I don't have a lot of time for network TV stuff. And and uh, you know, I watched the first season of Fargo, and I don't. I might have seen some of the second, but it's just one of those that I just kind of. It just kind of got swept under the rug. But it's one that I'd like to revisit at some point. Yeah. Right. The second season is my favorite. It's so definitely good enough to revisit. I just haven't. If that makes right. sense. Yeah. I mean, there's so much out there now, man. It's just, it's, yeah, it's like yeah. that's, you know. You just have to pick what you want to watch and stick with it. <laughs> yeah. You can lose lose an opportunity at something great like this. Like the show you right. were talking about last week, Garrett, what is it, Yellowstone? You know, that's one. I, oh, yeah. I'll get to it at some point, you know, but I, it's one of those I hope I don't forget about it. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, in three or four years when it's over and, and, so and it's streaming somewhere, like I want to, you know, be able to watch it. So you try and earmark all these different shows. They're all on different networks, and, and just trying to keep up with it all is. Oh yeah, like Fargo's tough. always been Fargo's always been something that. Yeah. I wanted to see. Are you just trying to catch up? And I still like uh, Mister. Uh, what, what was your say, Mister In Between? You, in between. you yeah. still haven't even. Do- uh uh-huh, uh Jesus dude, Christ! I'm telling you. You could do it all in one night, dude. We get all sidetracked. You you could do Mister In Between both seasons in a weekend. They're twenty two minute episodes, man. Huh? Oh really? That's it? Yeah, but it but it's perfect. Huh. It is. It's my that's my favorite show on right now. You're not gonna watch the last episode, are you again? Is it new no, episodes or are you watching the over. Huh? That's some sad shit right there. Yeah, it's gut wrenching dude, but it's perfect. What'd you say, Gary? Mr. In Between. Yeah. It's on Hulu, right? Yeah. Yes. It is it's the it's the best new show. That I've seen, like network show that I've seen that I can remember. It's that good. And nobody, and I, as far, I don't know. I mean, I hope there's a season three because I don't I know looked, how. I meant to is. tell you, Lee, that I looked that up the other day, and I did find some kind of confirmation about it that that there is going to def, definitely be a season. That's three. good. Yeah, but I don't know when. You know, because nobody can do anything. So who? Right. Yeah. Let's start. Yeah. Well, people are doing. People are doing stuff. Um, they were trying to. Yeah. Um, Mulan. There. They decided Disney. I don't know if you guys. You guys don't have Disney Plus anymore, do you? No, yeah. I have to no. get it back at the yeah. end of October yeah. for uh, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. But, but so Mulan, yeah. they just presented uh, all us Disney Plus people and said, "Hey, you guys can watch Mulan for thirty bucks." Everybody's. Everybody's going, oh, dude, 30 bucks. That's horrible. Me, a family of seven, five kids with a surround sound and a big screen out, I was like, that's actually pretty good. Like, that's actually pretty good. Remember when we were talking about how movies are going to change? Yeah. It's going to change. Bill and Ted's right now. You can watch Bill and Ted's. Own it for $25. If you took Oliver and yourself to Bill and Ted's, You'd yeah. spend twenty five dollars on the tickets, and then you'd spend another twenty on the popcorn. You're right. So it, it isn't the but same. It's, it's not the same. I understand. And I'm not giving them my fucking money. Well, I'm not giving them my money either. They can suck and it. Ri- and Rivers like it. dying, dying. He just keeps sending me this. Hey, Mulan, 
hey, Bill and Ted's just went down four bucks. He's pushing me, and I'm like, I don't want to do it yet because it's just a lot of money. I feel like it's one like oh, twenty four dollars for a movie. I'll probably only watch once. Ouch. But then they, it's yeah. not the money, Derek. It's the principle. It's the experience. It's and the, it's the principle. experience of sitting in the movie. Exactly. Right? That's why. That's why I'm happy to pay for a fucking tiny bucket of popcorn and spend eight dollars on it. Is because I'm going to sit in a cushy seat and a massive screen and see it in a way that I absolutely cannot at my house. Yes, I have surround sound. Yes, I have a flat screen, but it's just not the same thing. Now I do have a refrigerator full of beer and a comfortable chair, whatever. Sure, but it's not. It's a give and a take. Yeah, it's, it's not the same thing. Just not. I might, I might have to do. I might have to venture out for uh, uh, the new James Bond movie. When, when venture out? What are you talking about? There, I might go to the theater to see that. If I can, if if they show that in the theater around here. Well, you can, I, I mean, well, are you? At, I'm sorry. Are you still in North Carolina? Yeah. So, what are you talking about? Oh, the, the Cooper's not showing movies. Yeah, Cooper's not letting anybody. What? No, wait, 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 wait. What did you just say? The the uh, retro cinema four showing movies on the weekend. Are they? They are. The drive-ins are showing crazy stuff. Golden tickets got none uh, of our our locals are doing anything. Well, our local theater's not doing. Hey, anything. the golden tickets got the Evil Dead two. Uh, followed oh, awesome. by, oh, followed by Friday the 13th, Chapter 4 or something. Scream. Oh, I mean, like, it's like the best night ever. When? Uh, tomorrow night. Oh, damn. Yeah. Anyway, so, but no, but they're not, nobody's doing the new stuff. Yeah, I'd like to see Tenet. They're showing Bill and Ted 2, at, uh, Bill and Ted 3 at the Retro Cinema 4. I don't know, I don't know if it's like you gotta sit every three aisles or whatever, but... Well, you know, the first, listen, I got rid of, at the end of last year, I told my wife, the only reason we have cable is for Discovery ID and football. And we got rid of our cable uh, right after Game of Thrones, <laughs> the Game of Thrones final episode. Yeah. We got rid of cable, and then we got rid of the Discovery ID app. And... I didn't, I totally forgot. I'm like, I was all excited, you know, Tom Brady's moving to the Bucks, and we got Cam Newton up in New England, and ooh, I was convinced everything's yeah. all mixed up. Washington doesn't have a name. This is going to be a crazy year. It's going to be great. Um, and then there's not going to be fans. I want to see what that looks like. And then I forgot, I don't have any cable. But I did see there some highlights from the Chiefs games. There's a ton of people there. They had... Uh- they had several thousand in there. Was that family? Is that the family? Like how? No, that no. They just whatever. I I, I don't know. I, I don't mean, know how they allocate the tickets. I mean, well, that's Holmes one of the past the touchdown pass. I mean, it like ripped up a plug. Yeah. I'm like, where is that? Is that an audio track? Yeah. Or is that the real? Yeah. Well, like like in Charlotte on Sunday when the Panthers play the Raiders, there will be no fans. So I don't know. Are they going to pump sound in? We'll see. I don't, I don't, I don't really care. I'll t- well, I'll be watching them. <laughs> You'll be watching your Washington football club? Well, I mean, you know, I'll watch the game, and if if there's no sound, if, it, if there's no crowd noise, and it's just the announcers talking, then I'll just turn the shit off and put some music on and just watch the, right. you know, watch the screen. We're getting off track. We're, 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 we're way, way off track. Like, Lee's looking at me but like, that's what? The tri- Lee, but that's the trick. Like, look, but that's cool. But how much do you think that affects them playing, though? Oh, a ton, I think. Oh, absolutely. You I think mean, it affects they call it? that home field advantage, you for know, in reason. places yeah. for a reason. You know, imagine getting a big play and you're getting all hyped up and, you know, that they'll still be hyped up, but it's just not going to be the same. Oh, dude. Are you and, just hear. Yeah. No, you're, and you're going you're gonna yeah. to hear, you're going to hear the quarterback giving out the play. And for the first time ever, that defense, the defensive line is going to be able to hear what he is well, saying. They'll, then they'll whisper. They don't know how to whisper because they've been doing it for They're the same way. They're going to whisper. Okay. Whisper. Okay. All right, whatever. Anyway, whisper. enough of that. <laughs> so yeah, that's they be like, that shit ain't going to work. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, that's great. That's great out Forest uh, City that they're actually showing movies again, man. I that's don't know great. how it's working, but they, they I mean, they, they say they're showing movies. But you guess huh. what? Guess what? You're married to a nurse. You'll never get out of the house. 
You'll never get out of the house. You're really going to have to come up with a, a, a doozy to she's be able gonna, to She's going to Kathy Bates to misery theater. your fucking ass yeah. if you think you're going to go out to a fucking movie. You need to get up with Tom Cruise and see what he wore to uh, go see Tenet and see if you can, <laughs> see if you can order a, a special face unit like he had in order to uh, remain like safe. Like the old brass diving helmet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong. Bonnie. There's something wrong with the water heater. I'm going to go to Lowe's and see if I can just figure out if they've got refurbished. I'm going to go a couple of places and just figure Good, out. I'll be back in about 93 minutes. <laughs> no, the new James Bond movie is like two and a half hours. I'd have to. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to go see my mom. Um, Lee. I mean, I'm going to go see your mom. <laughs> I'm 100% with you, Lee. I, I, I will, if, if it's available somewhere locally by... You know, Thanksgiving, I think, is when they're tentatively supposed to be releasing it. If the theaters in Hickory are up, depending upon how, you know, what the kind of guidelines are, because I don't want to go there and get sick, but I would love no. to go and see the movie. You guys aren't going to go and get sick. That's what every sick person said, I'm Who's sure. A, do, do you know any sick people? Oh, here we go. Do you have any, do, do you know any sick people? Yeah. Do you? Oh, I don't know. Okay, anyway. All right, so then I'll go. Oh, okay. Or do you want to go? I, you know, it's you, whatever. You've got my tablet. All right, so I so I watched. Here, you take it back. No, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it because I I it's fun. I watched one of the biggest pieces of goddamn nonsense I've <laughs> ever seen in all my fucking life. All oh, right. It's one of those movies, and we've talked about it in our 81 podcasts. There's been very little amount of time that I've, or there's been a few though, that I've watched and I'm like, God damn, why can't I make a fucking movie? The Shed, it's on Shudder. Lee, have you seen it? No, no, I, I skipped it. You should probably skip it. It may be one of the biggest pieces of shit ever. Uh, Frank Wiley from yeah. Fame, Oliver... Stone movies, and he's yeah. been around. He's he's done some stuff. Is a vampire that gets stuck in a shed in the back of a house, and uh, two young boys decide that they're going to use him to uh, get rid of some of their uh, enemies. And it may be the it's 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 there, there's nothing good about it. It's not even like it's it's a low budget movie, but it's done terribly. Yeah. Like it's done. It's not one that's done. It, I'm sitting there going, "Vampire in a shed." Ooh, that's smart. But the story doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. You just can't get out. Yeah, and then where well, they keep shooting bullets into the shed to keep you know to keep him from because he can't hit sunlight. And then, but is it is there no nighttime uh, in this sure, place? But but nobody comes around. But here's the thing. Uh, the the lead, which is some new, you know, J.J. Warren. I'm sure he's the executive. I'm sure he's the director of Frank Sabellatella's fucking uncle or nephew <laughs> or some shit. <laughs> yeah, butt buddy, whatever, what the fuck ever it is. Um, he's he's shooting bullets into the top of the shed to keep the vampire from getting out because you know the vampire when he hits the sun sure. starts frying. Well, but the vampire keeps figuring out a way when the door, the opening, the, the shed door opens to grab them, to reach out and grab the people and pull them into the shed. It makes no sense. It's, dude, I, I didn't even, uh, listen. How I did you even make it through this? This sounds I didn't. just. I didn't. Okay, good. I actually didn't. Good. I'm and proud of you for slamming the fucking 15 door. 15 minutes left. There was 15 minutes left. So you made it an hour into it? Because it couldn't have well, been much longer like, than yeah, that. Yeah. It's only an hour and 30 Good on minutes, you, man. So. Good on you. So yeah, the shed. Skip it, guys. Um, skip it. I shit can my shutter because there's. it's just... Even for like the paltry $3 a month or whatever the fuck it is, I, there, I just... There are sponsors. Be quiet. I can't do it. It's fucking... <laughs> it's just like... I mean, on the like, off chance that there's one good fucking movie on there, there's 30 I have to sift through that are fucking like the shed. Putrid. 
Well, but Satanic that's, but that's panic! It's ch- fucking garbage, but man. But that's what that channel's for, though. And You're that's right. What's, that's what's brilliant about it. You're right. Hey, the guy, I don't hate what they do. You know, I just... A lot of the content, I just... Come on. The color, the color of or the color in space that we did? Color is, of... Out of... Color out... Or out of space. Out of space, off. yes. The Clive Barker, whatever. I don't know. So anyway, so uh, yes, the shed. Skip it. All right, and so then I watched Happy, Happy, Joy, Joy. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's the Ren and Stimpy documentary. Okay. On John K. Who? By him being a child molester. Yeah. No, actually, you know what? I'm gonna be honest, and this is gonna sound real. And this is listen disclaimer. This is coming from a guy with five kids. Right. What he did to the show, what he did to destroy, like, what he had, is worse than whatever he did to those two students that he brought in later. Like, he he presented Nickelodeon with all sorts of different things. They said, hey, um, he had some sort of show, and it had Ren and Stimpy as their dogs, and the producer, the executive producer, said, why don't you focus on those two right there? So he goes back and he starts and he hires and gets money. He starts hiring people and he hires all these people to start drawing this stuff up. And in everything they draw, he shoots back. They missed every deadline. I mean, it was a disaster. You hadn't seen it. Nobody's seen this. I have you, not. You, do you know anything about it? We, no. we remember we used to watch Red and Stimpy and go, this is the best thing ever. I've, I watched every bit of it that I could find and I have shown my son it because it's so weird and I love it. Right. Well, he never made the deadline. It only did two episodes, or it only did two seasons. Right. And his uh, the guy that he helped that helped him do it ended up they ended, Nickelodeon ended up firing John K because what was happening was is he wouldn't sign off on anybody's drawings. He kept sending them back, and they were getting behind and behind and yeah. behind and behind, and then. John would get under pressure and tell Nickelodeon to fuck off. And at some point in time, they, Nickelodeon was like, are we going to do this or are we not going to do this? And went to his uh, partner, and I guess it was um, I guess it was Bob Camp, Bob Camp, the other guy. Yeah. And said, he's done. We're firing him. And he still couldn't shape it up. And then after that, he he, he started trying to make it again and then it just it's just like the downfall of this guy but the, the, the sad part is is they're interviewing him oh. and just him talking too like him oh. you just look at him the way he's talking I'm just like God you're a piece of shit man you had everything like people loved Ren and Stimpy oh and there was a time him. where it was dude it was the it was the tits for yes. sure I mean it was crazy so yeah. it was a very cool documentary it's very sad it's you know I mean, but how many times you see documentaries or movies about artists that had everything going for them and they they let their they hub- train wreck. they let their hubris freaking right. blow it up? Well, this was one of those. Okay. Um, where did then, you Where did you watch this? I actually bought it. I um I bought it. Oh, okay. It's uh Apple Plus. I don't know. It's uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. If I can get it to you, I'll get it to you. All right. Great. If you could, if I could send a pirated version to you. Yeah, there you go. Send it it to my fucking Commodore 64, motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) So, and then, uh, really the only thing, the only other thing I've watched is, uh, started Yellowstone Season 3. Just, I just wanted to, I just wanted to justify it. Uh, the last time, I was telling you how great it was, but it was like, oh, it's all the time, and. There's so much action and so much drama that's too, almost too much. I guess Taylor heard me. Because, well... Kind of calmed it down. Yeah, kinda, even though this happened yeah. way before. You don't right. have to tell... Dude, people don't know that. Stop. Okay. You don't have to timestamp me. No, but anyway, yes. Uh, so, I guess Taylor... What, what, I guess what I'm saying is, coming from a storytelling point of view, I'm like, man, he needs to calm it down. Season three, I'm three, se- I'm three episodes in. And he's brought it back to where we're starting to learn more about the characters again and building the building the drama a little bit slower. And it's man, I'm telling you, it's great. 
Okay. It's very, it's it's great. It, it, I'll get, hey, I'll get to Mr. In Between, but you guys should probably get to Yellowstone. It ain't going to be as good, dude. Fair I'm just, enough. I'm just telling you. Fair as enough. good as Yellowstone might be, I promise you it's not this, man. I've never seen anything quite like this. It's What it's is just, it? It's just about this. It's blocking. I, All right, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, it's, just, it's about a guy who's criminal, and he also has like a family life, and he's trying to juggle them, sort of. But it's not like The Sopranos in that way. Is like he doesn't really hide his scummy behavior, and he's not really ashamed of it either. No. Like his his when he does something violent, it's it's just like you know, like he says. I think it's the first episode. He says in prison, you disrespect somebody, they'll split your head open. He says people have gotten accustomed to disrespect the people out in the real world because they think they can get away with it. And, and he you, doesn't let them get away with you it. You cannot get away with it with him. You do not. He, it's a, it's a, what's good about it is he's a character who never tries to sort of justify the bad things he does. He does them because that's what he does. And I promise you, Garrick, I know you well enough. You will absolutely love You, you will just love him. You, you, and if Scott Ryan's not in big movies in like the next two years, then just it's bullshit. You know, yeah, it's bullshit. Is it the guys? He's freaking. He's like. He's like a, a, a more menacing and physically threatening Willem Dafoe, but so, Australian. Uh, so, so I need to start watching this tonight. And just skip out on Yellow. So I need to stop watching Yellowstone and get into this right now. Yeah. Yes. All right. The first season's only like six episodes. Yeah, no, I know. I just looked. And the second season's I'm what, like 10 or 12? It, and I'm sure yeah, I think it's 10. It. I'm just telling you, Garrick, you will fucking love it, man. All right, man. Just get a couple right, episodes man. in and then text us and let us know what you think. First thing I've been watching, look, The Boys on Amazon Prime, all right? And when this show came out some fucking time last year, I watched the first, I think... Two episodes, and it just—I don't know, man. Sometimes you're—you watch something, it just doesn't work for you. And that was my experience with the boys. I started seeing commercials for the second season coming on, and I thought, you know what? I'm laid up. I got all the time in the fucking world. This is—I I watched this a while back, and uh, so I, I restarted the boys. And I don't know for whatever reason, it just all came together for. And I'm not going to say I love it, but I really, really like it. It is like the, you know, for somebody like me who's been inundated with, like, the same superhero movies for, like, what seems like for fucking ever, the Avengers and and all their cohorts and all this shit, this is like the anti-Avengers. It's about a group of just this society where they... a lot of people have like these gifts, these powers, and and these. I guess the six strongest ones. It's called the six, right? Um, the seven or the seven. Kind of form with this company, and they kind of police the United States. Um, and it's fucking uniquely done. It's. Very disgusting in a lot of parts. There's a lot of like people exploding and, and just blood and guts that you wouldn't really expect. But what really, it's just, it's sick humor that I, I'm i actually shocked about a lot of it not getting uh, more flat for some of the things that they've done on this show. Look, if you're looking for something to watch, I highly, highly suggest the boys at least give it a few episodes and see what you think. A lot of people have said that. Um, they're doing a thing as in CD shows, man. They're killing us. Yeah, there's just too many. They're, they are doing a thing though that I, I don't really like. Normally on on Amazon, and one thing that I like, Netflix uh, does it the same. They come up with a show. It's the whole fucking show, right? It's like the boys. Here's your ten episodes for the second season. They're releasing them. Every Friday, they should do that. that. That's what Paramount. That's what Yellowstone did. That's what all these guys well, did. I, I don't fucking like it. it. I, I don't like it. I, I would just rather have it there so I can just sit down and watch it. I don't want to have to wait a week or, or whatever. Right? You, you know what okay, I mean? So what? What? Can I say something? Sure. 
You used to have to do that. True Detective, did you not wait? Well, with HBO shows. Okay, yeah, but I'm even TV, even Dallas. Shows. Look, I'm when, J- shows. Dude, when JR this was. This ain't sh- fucking 1985, Garrick. Oh, but there, th- that's where the money is. It's let, leaving you hanging. But it's not in this case, because I have prom, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm not paying. Like, I paid for it already. So just fuck, give it to me. Come on, come on, give it to me. All right, why, why are you trying to, you know, it's I'm like just, dangling it. I don't. I, I'm just saying. That look, it's not all enough. All it's not enough to keep me from watching the show. It just kind of. You know, like when Stranger Things comes on, or it came on this last, what was it, the third season or whatever, fuck. Oliver woke me up at like five in the morning so we could start, as soon as it was streaming, right. and we sat and there and, the whole thing. and we watched the whole the whole thing, that, you know, on a Saturday. Is there more money to be made by doing one show a week? On these streaming services, I don't see the point. Sure there is. Okay. All right. If you because say, they do one show that week, and then they add, they throw then then marketing people throw money at them <coughs> to put ads in front of them to preview the next week's season. It's TV again. It's coming. It was the way it was always done. I, I, shot, under, I understand that, but who I shot thought, Jr. I thought we were past this. Who it's shot kind of Jr. Old. Dallas? Nobody, that was a, nobody. That was a year, cared, apparently. They waited a year. It was all a fucking dream. Okay, whatever the point is. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. Let's get the fuck on with the boys. Watch it or don't. If you want to wait I a do. week or whatever. There's like three episodes on there. I guess there's going to be a new one on today uh, that I haven't seen, or maybe it'll be tomorrow. I'm not really sure. The only other thing that I watched, and I was so happy to find it. It is one of, not only one of my favorite, absolute favorite uh, British crime kind of gangstery movies that I have ever seen, but it is one of my all-time favorite movies of all time. The acting in this is absolutely fucking perfection. And if you have not seen this movie, I highly suggest you go find it right now. It's 2000's Sexy Beast. That's what's up. Jonathan Glazer's oh uh, debut. Yes. He was he was in England at this point. He was making commercials and fucking rap videos. And uh, some TV stuff. Somebody gave him a chance on this. Oh, starring so Ray Winston, Ben Kingsley, Sir fucking Ben Kingsley. And my man crush of all man crushes, Mr. Ian McShane. This Teddy Band. Oh, it's just... They're so good. It's, it's so good. It's Where did you find this? Fuck, I don't even remember. Did you rent it? I mean, did you actually I think it was it? on, like, Prom somewhere. Oh, my God. I think it's one that they that just, you know, they have that, like, what's new to Prom. I'm pretty sure I saw it on there. It's just... Man, I can't even stand how good this movie is. I When I originally saw it, I did not love it as much as I did... A couple of days ago watching I, I just sat there and I couldn't fucking wipe the smile off my face. Because every scene was better and better and better and better. And and even going into it knowing the movie, knowing everything about it, I still was met with such anticipation, waiting on the lines to be delivered, waiting on yeah. Don fucking Logan to show up, waiting on the whole thing to fucking unfold. It's... Man, you want to talk about an underrated, underappreciated movie? This is a it is. fantastic. It's a, it's a, it's fantastically shot. It looks fucking great. The story is fantastic. I, I can't. I don't have one negative thing to say about it. It's perfect. It, it really is. Perfect. So you've got a retired Ray Winston. He lives in Spain with with his ex porn star wife. And they're living it up on the high life in a villa somewhere in Spain. He's got like a fucking badass swimming pool and just an awesome house. And they they, they just hang out by the pool and go have dinner with, with a buddy of his and, and his wife. And He's an ex-gangster, you know, but he's retired. And his buddy, his buddy H, H, 
whatever the mm-hmm. fuck his name is. I think. Yeah. yeah. Comes to him and, and he's like, hey, man, I got a call from, you know, there, there's a job in London. He's like, hey, man, I'm retired. I'm not, not interested in this. And they say, hey, well, they're sending Don. And he's like, oh, fuck. And you don't know who Don Logan is until Don Logan shows up. And then he, you can't forget who Don Logan is. God, it's such a good movie. Ben Kingsley in this role, I, I believe he was nominated yes. for Best Supporting Actor at the he Academy was, Awards back was, then. That's correct. I don't know I I don't know who won. I don't give a shit who won because there there's no way that anybody could have put on a performance that even came close to equaling this, much less much less surpassing it. This thing, Don Logan is like a friend that you used to hang out with when you were younger, you know, or party with back when you were younger. And then you look back on those days and you're like, how the fuck did I hang out with that fucking crazy son of a bitch? Why the fuck did I hang out with this fucking guy? Yeah. But you can't, you know, you. and in some cases you can't get away from them, right? Like, like, you. like me and you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so so Don shows up and and tries to convince uh, Gal to to come and do this this cool ass fucking slick ass bank robbery, and some shenanigans ensue and and the story unfolds. But everybody in this is perfect. It's so perfectly casted. The music is great. Every fucking thing about it is perfect. If you've never seen or heard of this movie, I highly, highly suggest it. Sexy Beast from 2000. If you have seen it and it's been a while, revisit it because I promise you, I've seen this movie probably at least five times, but I haven't seen it in probably 10 or 12 years. And it was so good. It was so much fun revisiting it. it you know, it's one of those where you go in and you're not really sure. I was oh, like, yeah. man, is it. Is it? Was what it just I, my high school stuff? Or did, what I just, am I just going to like this movie? Well, it's, because, it's more like, you know, yeah, is it what it was what to me? Is it what it was? Because I'm fuck, different dude. now. We're old. We're old, and we don't, we're not, it, we don't have those rebelling thoughts. Well, maybe, like maybe I related to it more because I wanted to be gal so fucking bad. I want to be fucking retired in Spain in a goddamn villa with a fucking ex-porn star. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, you know, going out to fucking hey. dinner every night and laying by the pool like he does. And then Garrick shows up. No, no, no! Oh, man. Yeah. Fucking perfect fucking okay. movie, dude. Perfect, perfect fucking perfect. movie. Speaking of the Oscars. <laughs> Speaking, what the fuck is It's that? all about diversity now, Garrick. It's like... Uh, We're not going to censor your art. We're just going to tell you what it must contain in order for it to be viewed or, or acceptable. If you or want to graduate into the... Oh, great. So so now what's going to happen is the studios are going to put... You know, where we do index cards and go, well, we're going to build this story. We're going to make this... Well, it's really- like this. You have to have a certain amount of diversity. It doesn't have to be in the actual film. It has to be in your crew or in your producing, it doesn't matter. Because Hollywood producers and directors will find a way to skirt this fucking thing. But it comes across to me, it's almost, it's not censorship. It's more like, no, you can do what you want, but you have to do it this way. It must include this. China. That's kind of how it makes it's me feel. China. Yeah. You're going to do it the way we want to do it. Right. I don't care how you, you you just gonna have to figure out a way to make it work on paper. Right. And that's exactly what everybody's gonna do is work, make it work on paper. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, it's not gonna help. It, it's not going to advance any of these no. these causes. It's Fuck like no. It, to me, it it almost like do you want to win the award or be involved in something like that on your own fucking validity? Or do you want it handed to you because you think you're a fucking snowflake? Because you think you're special? And you think that it's owed to you or that it should be this way? It's not fair. Life isn't fucking fair, dude. You're damn right it's not. You know, and, and I just, I'm, I'm to that point of like, you know, I, I understand the plight of, of you know, not 
getting your way or, or feeling like you're excluded. But I just don't think that it being forced like this is really doing anything to really confront the reasons why there has always been this kind of separatism. But, it's adding more separatism. Well, it's. I just think it... I just don't. I just don't like being told, you know, what something has to be in order for it to, you know, reach whatever plateau it is. If your aspiration is to make a movie that wins the Academy Award for Best Picture, and you did it with a uh, half a girl crew and a half a boy crew, and all the black people didn't want to work with you because you suck. Or just whatever it may be, you know. I, get it. I mean, I did. I get it. It, it. You know, trying to juggle all that together, and then, yeah. and then on top of that, make something that's that's what it it was originally meant to be. I'm not saying it's impossible. I just it just doesn't feel right to me. It just doesn't feel right. What do you think, Lee? I think well, I love it because it further points out how pointless the Oscars are. Right? I, yeah, it, I absolutely agree. I, I, I think and, you're and, right. and the fact that people think that business people care anything about diversity, this will not find the next Spike Lee. This will not help promote a filmmaker who could be the next Spike Lee. What will is people just getting their friends together and making a movie. And we love Spike so Lee. I really don't give a shit about it. Yeah. Like you know, because it, it. I mean, the Oscars don't. I mean, they're. They're meaningless. It's like like the, a, a few weeks ago, I saw they still had uh, the MTV vi- uh, Music Video Awards. MTV hasn't shown music videos in seventeen years, so to me, the Oscars are kind of like that. Yeah, they're movies that no one watches except Garrick, and uh, uh, the that, tree uh, of life. Awards that don't matter. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's like you I know agree. these you know movies like. Like, we can't remember who beat Ben Kingsley for the uh, best actor. I guarantee that. Let me look it up real quick. Okay, you do that. And here's another thing I'm going to say. That movie is nowhere near as memorable as Sexy Beast. Right. I, I'm going no to jump on Lee's tail here. You know, Boon Jong-hoon, who won last year for Parasite, won Best Picture because he had the best fucking picture. It had nothing to do with anything else in my eyes watching it. It's a great fucking movie. You know... Absolutely. And, and I feel like if I were him, I would be like, well, now, wait a minute, why are you... Like, you don't have to do this. I, I don't understand... I, I just don't get it. All right. Like, I, I don't know, maybe I just have a different mentality about, like, if you want something, you go out and you fucking do it. And you work as hard as you can in order to get there. But if you want it just given to you because of, you know, whatever it may be, I, I just, to me, it's not going to have the same kind of feeling if you actually accomplish it. You know, I think you'd be kidding yourself. So. I do, and I agree. This is crazy. Whatever. That's I saw crazy as uh what was her name? Uh, Kirstie Alley that was on fucking Cheers. She went the fuck off about this on you know social media and whatever, and got blasted. You know, you speak out about anything that you disagree with, you get fucking blasted. And she hasn't really you done can't anything say in a lot. Anything on social media? Oh, I, I, then just get fucking rid of it then. It's dude, just, it, dude, it's I don't. Know. But, but it, hey, again, this is the same. It's like. You're right. You you fucking either get step in line and agree with every fucking little detail of this, or you're a fucking bigot and you don't you're you're fucking you hate fucking everybody that's not you, and that's uh, simply not the case. That's so, not how I feel. So here I'll I'll tell this story while uh, Lee's looking this up, and I'm sure he saw. I, I found it out. By the okay, way. well hold on a second then. Um, I call a potential so a potential intern out of nowhere. He he searched my site sent me a message and said, I need some work. I need 60 hours. 60 hours. For uh, school, man. And I, I just and I was like, I, she, he's like, I don't even need him to be official. I just need some work. That's what he said. Okay. I sent him an email back and said, here, call me. 
I'm on vacation right now. Call me. He calls me. And he says, hi, my name is so-and-so. And I was like, great. I was like, hey. He's like, I, I want to, I need to shadow video. My teachers told me. My teachers told me that it would be great. And I'm like, perfect. I was like, do you need the hours? I was like, do we need to clock the hours? And he says, well, we can. Yeah, that would be great. That would be extra internship. But uh, they just more said that I just needed to, I that I was a little bit behind and I wanted to, I needed to shadow on some productions. And I was like, well, I like, I can always use you, man. Like I've got this, this, and this coming up. Right. I said, I've got edits in the uh, office. How good are you editing? Like I, I can put you to work, man. And I can give you the hours you need. And he's like, okay, perfect. And I, he, I was like, when do you want to start? He's like, when do you want me to start? I'm like, when do you want to start? He says, uh, I can start tomorrow. And I was like, great. He's like, what time? I said, I get to the office at 7.30. He, he goes, mm, mm, how about 12.30? <laughs> Why? Because he's 20 and he's a cunt. And he's the reason that our <laughs> generation... <laughs> I love that. Is that, you, gonna, is that gonna be the name of the show? Do you know he's what the, twenty and, and he's a cunt? Do you want to know what my reply was? I get here at seven thirty. He says, "Okay, so I'll see you at twelve thirty. Like they're oblivious, dude. They're fucking like seven thirty was not an option. No, yeah, for him it wasn't. He's he needs the hours and he needs yeah. he needs the shadow." My office opens, dude. You are, my, and I, dude. I didn't call him and go, "Hey, man, what's good with your schedule? I know I'm not paying you." He's calling me. He needs this. He needs the hours. He's gonna come right. at twelve thirty, dude. I'm out of here at three thirty most of the days because I come at seven thirty. Right. It's crazy. Hmm. I fucking went to Panera Bread today, and this fucking twenty year old, nineteen year old cunt. Oh, I don't give a shit. See she you next my, Tuesday, she, folks. <laughs> she took my order. I said, I want a barbecue. I want the two. I want the barbecue sandwich and the Thai salad. Done. Right? Pull around. She hands me the bag. I grab the bag. She says, so, I messed up your order. And I was like, oh, yeah? What happened? She says, I ordered you a barbecue salad and a Thai salad. And she kind of smiled. She's like, is that going to be okay? And I looked at her and I was like, Seriously? Tell me you took the bag and just threw it right back in her fucking face. Tell me that happened so I can get that, get that mental picture in my like, head. I don't know, is not paying you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. Um, but I wanted the sandwich. She's like, yeah, I know, but I had the barbecue salad. And I looked at her and I said, you know what, it is fine. I'll just never come back here ever again. She's but like, oh, that's she's a lie, because you will, because you're not, up in there a cunt. No, no, You've I been eating there for fucking ten plus whatever. years, asshole. Never mind. Anyway, we're we trying to slide right, come past on, me, fuck Come on, dude, face. We're, we're, we're at like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about fucking... This is the best... Hey, Jumbo barbecue say, salad. This is the yes. best episode we've ever had. Come on, Lee, let's go. Give me something. Okay, first off, Ben Kingsley was not even nominated. Oh, that sounds Globe. right. Oh, he's on the Golden okay. Globe. He's Golden but Globe, though. When was the last time anybody watched the Cider House Rules? Oh, yeah! Oh, Man, God. who the oh. fuck was in that again? Spider Man. Fucking Toby McGuire. Oh, the best supporting actor for, Spy- for Cider House Rules. Which, if I remember, is a movie about old-timey abortion. Uh, Michael Codd, who was huffing freaking... <laughs> Michael Caine, correct? Michael Caine. Yeah. Which, I never saw it, and... Nobody's seen that movie in 20 years. Wow, man. But you watched Sexy Beast two days ago. Jesus Christ, and he... Oh, I'm telling you, folks, I'm not over-exaggerating on it. It's that it's fucking amazing. good. It's Yeah. I, I feel like watching it right now. I watch it about once a year. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I think it's on Prime, dude. I'm I got. I mean, 
Either way, I got the DVD. I but, thought uh, I had the DVD. Hell, I might, but... God, it's it's, it's, it's probably right. in the landfill with your VHS tapes. Uh, that's actually, Lee, I know I know you like to jab me with that every once in a while, but I'm pretty sure it was with my, VH, my VHS but, tapes that got Dude, done. we used to watch that shit. Dude, we used to sit around and drink freaking beer at your old place, dude, and watch Sexy Beast. Shit like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And Wait, something I was if I would have said, hey... The guy who played... If all the... Guy the guy who Sorry, go ahead. Yes. He was actually dying of cancer when they shot the movie, but it was so good, he was like, I gotta be in this movie. No shit. That's how good the movie was. He was like, dude, all right. and like, by the way, he started to get really sick, and they're like, dude, do you need to go to the hospital? And he was like, nah. He's like, I want to be in this, I want this to be my last movie. That's fucking That's how good that movie is. Yeah. Hey, Patrick Swayze, man, in that freaking show on AMC. The Beast, yeah. They're, they're feeding him, dude. Oh, how, how funny is that? Sexy Beast, The Beast. Yeah. They're feeding yeah. that dude freaking chemo on set, man. But he's like, dude, I'm going to do this until the end. Yeah. Well, that's all I got. I did. I saw Sexy it. beast, fucking barbecued salad. God damn. <laughs> Gen- right screen TVs. We've really hit the... God damn. Hit the- and millennials, you can fuck yourself. Dude, you're really doing it now. <laughs> really doing it. Just fuck it. <laughs> fuck it at this point, Garrett. Just... I'll cut that bass for it. I'll cut it off. I'm so, sure anyway, you will not. Yeah, no. Anyway, so yes. Oh, last thing, let, real quick. Last thing I wanted to touch on before before we get out of here. Lee, I know you're as excited as I am about the Dune trailer. Oh, yes! Right. Uh, did you have a chance to, to see the new trailer that came out a couple of oh, days ago? Oh, I watched ago? it like five times. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it actually looks like something I'm going to be able to follow. But how, yeah. how, which I'm excited about. But how See, they, I don't hate I don't hate the Lynch version. I didn't right, hate it. I just couldn't really. Say, I like, just I, don't, I guess I just don't know it well enough. Wait, who's the new, right. who's doing the new one though? Villanueva. Oh, so it's yeah, so it's Blade Runner, dude. It's, it's yeah, it's Big Guy Mandy. Okay, have you seen it? No, uh, the I, trailer. I'm telling you, oh. dude. Look, I have no TV. I got nothing. Uh, I know. Well, look it up on your phone, like you know. Why well, go watch it on your son's TV? Yeah, there you go. Uh, on your. Fucking Commodore 64, you fucking asshole. Click. <laughs> no, it looks good. It looks really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. I hate that we're getting fucked on all these movies that are coming out, you know, the, at some point, and, you know... Yeah, the, don't push them until after the election. Well, and the time that we lost, you know, in production over the last several months is just... Oh, next year's gonna suck. Yeah, there's not gonna be anything. We're gonna get we're gonna get inundated with like ten cool movies, and then we're not gonna have shit for six months. But hey, you know what? Other, than, may, other than stuff like the shed, of course, or that may be the best thing that ever happened. Could you imagine like back? Just just go back and say, instead of twenty movies I gotta see, there's only ten, and those ten are quality. I mean. Yeah, but here's the thing, man. We were going to do James Bond, and I fucking watched them all. That was a year ago. That was fucking I took my ago. mortgage class a year ago. I'm yeah. like trying to figure I out. I can't even I remember anything. I don't. Life's been crazy. Yeah. Well, guys, it has been a very exciting, angry... What are we fucking doing next? I don't know. Where Lee, are we? Lee, I don't even Lee's know. The, Lee's the fantastic. Lee, where dude. are we, man? We got a ball. Next, we are doing a trauma movie. Oh, oh fuck. yes. God damn it. I forgot about this shit. <laughs> it will not be anything like the last two we've no, seen. We're gonna, I'm a fucking I hate it already. I'm gonna I don't fucking name of it. What are you doing? Like? This was your idea, Doug. I would put Lloyd Kaufman's fucking head well, in my like, ass. I would. Yeah. You were like, we should do. I must have been drinking. Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, so, so yes, we're watching Combat. Combat Shock, which I've never seen. Oh, God. Damn. Combat Shock, and it's on uh, Prime. Shock? Shock. Shock, Combat Shock. Like, yeah. Shock the monkey! Shock the monkey! Okay. Alright. Combat Shock. It's on Prime, maybe? Yes. Okay. Cool. Troma. Just, I remember several, fuck, 10 or 15, hell, might have even been 
50 episodes ago, I remember Derek went on a little rant about some trauma movies that he really had some issues They're with. They're so horrible. I cannot wait to get into it with you guys next week. It's going to be great, man. Uh, our last of the B-movies. What are we doing after that? Nobody knows. We'll figure it out next week. We will figure it out. Well, thank you for tuning in to our longest cast ever at 127. Nice. This, is, this episode is longer than the movie we reviewed this week. <laughs> That's a fact. But it was pretty good. All right, then. Hey, everybody. Wash your fucking hands, wear your fucking mask, and stay your ass in the house if you can. But every now and then, stick off and go to the movies. If you can. <laughs>